Welcome back. Singapore has announced a radical plan to live with COVID, laying out a new vision for life to return to normal. The proposed changes would scrap lockdowns and mass contact tracing. There'll be no goals of zero transmission, no announcements of daily case numbers and quarantine free travel will return for travellers. The city state says COVID will be treated like other endemic diseases such as the flu. I'm joined now by the chair of Singapore's National Infection Prevention and Control Committee, Professor Dale Fisher. Professor, thanks for joining the latest tonight. Let me ask you up front, they sound like extreme measures. Why have they been put in place? Well, Michael, you need to think of what the end point of, of all this is. And, and the end point is actually endemic disease. Uh, we know it transmits between vaccinated people, so, so we're going to see ongoing transmission, but the vaccine renders the, the disease very mild or even asymptomatic. So once you've got enough people vaccinated, uh, we're targeting 80%, then, then you'll really be able to, to relax everything. The, the tricky bit, of course, is when you're in this transition phase, where you've got a lot of people vaccinated, mm. uh, the ramifications of a single case, obviously a small number of cases as we're seeing in Australia now has got, uh, got very uh, scary ramifications. Yes. In, in Singapore, we get a cluster and, and we know that uh, you know, half the people are vaccinated. So, so we can ease the screws a little bit, but that's gonna have to be a sort of a step-by-step -step, uh, process over the next six months. But as you put it, there is no other way around that other than mass vaccination, right? It, it, for this tr strategy to work, it has to be mass vaccination. Correct. This is uh, what everyone's been waiting for. Uh, we should be rejoicing the fact that we have a vaccine and, and therefore a way out of the pandemic. That was the, the, the global strategy. It was every country's strategy. So, so now it's about implementing it and, and taking advantage of it. And taking advantage of it means the pandemic will end. I mean, Singapore's about the size of Sydney. Would you, are there some lessons here? Could that same plan, the same strategy uh, work here in Australia? Uh, the, you mean the transition yes. strategy? Uh, I don't think there's any choice. Uh, it, it's it's going to need to be a, a, a very uh, thoughtful conversation in Australia because there will become a time. See, no one wants all the social restrictions and, and lockdowns and business closures and things like that. No one wants those, but that's a key part of the response, uh, especially in Australia, when, when you're not vaccinated and you've got cases and clusters. But eventually you'll get to a point where it doesn't mean sort of widespread, uh, you know, deaths, uh, hospitals becoming overwhelmed and at that point you'll have to say well do we still need to do these harsh lockdowns and things like that and when you're at 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent how are you going to respond I think the most uh, uh, confusing aspect of this in Australia will be the mass gatherings people love going to the yeah. to the football and the cricket and things like that but if if you're not going to have a lockdown and try and get back to zero but you're still only partially vaccinated, then sending some people with COVID, likely COVID in to 50,000 people, mm. uh, you're gonna get a super spreader event, even though you're partially vaccinated. So it's, it's a big discussion yeah. for Australia. So not, just two brief things there, not shooting for zero, is that just a realistic, reasonable way to go about it and, uh, rather than a false target that's been set? I don't think anyone disputes that the disease is going to become endemic. It, it has to be allowed to circulate like a, a cold or a flu. Um, but you can't really let that happen until you've got everyone vaccinated. But when you're in this transition phase, do you still need to do the harsh lockdowns? So at what point will you stop going for zero and allow low level transmission because we don't want to do lockdowns when half the population's vaccinated. Mm. You're, you're in a sort of a grey zone. And not reporting the numbers, I can see how that would certainly help psychologically, maybe a, a nation start to move on. But I wonder whether, if in Australia, that might lead to some suspicion about what's being hidden or not revealed in full. Well, it's, it's all in the timing. Again, we know at the end point, no one's going to care about another 10 mild colds that have been discovered because... Mm. We're at the end point, everyone's vaccinated. So at what point 
can you stop saying you know we've had another yeah. whole bunch of asymptomatic cases so so we'll be spreading a lot more focus onto severe disease and whether those people were vaccinated or unvaccinated this is much more important information uh, in terms of information to the public about how the vaccine's performing but also uh, information to the health system on how how vulnerable the hospitals are in terms yeah. of numbers of people, ICU beds and things. Interesting. All right. Uh, very interesting to talk to you, in fact. Professor Dale Fisher there in Singapore. Thank you.